Welcome to another episode of Lessons from an Old Quilt. This is a series that I do where I look at old quilts and I talk about what we can learn as modern makers from these old beauties. Today we're going to look at this eight-pointed star. It is a scrappy eight-pointed star. The maker used a string piecing technique to create these scrappy eight-pointed stars and it is spectacular. I purchased this at an auction. I need to take better notes at these auctions, but I think I paid around $80 for this one. I knew I'd be paying a premium because it is in such great shape and it's just a wonderful example of an old quilt. The quilt measures 70 and a half by 74 and a half. So it's a nice size quilt. This quilt was completed in the early 1960s and stay tuned for the closer look to find out how I know that for sure. There are nine blocks in this quilt and they're all so wonderful. Also make sure you stay tuned to the end because I have a little collaboration announcement that has to do with an antique quilt. But before that, let's get started taking a closer look at this amazing quilt. This quilt is a beauty and it's so much fun, especially because of the way it's pieced and because of all the amazing quilting. So let's take a closer look at this. Let's first look at the block. It is huge. It is 18 and a half inch square and there are nine of these in it. And you can see that it is an eight pointed star. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Has all these wonderful inset seams here. And it's just magnificent. This is what they would consider a string quilt because there are strings or strips of pieces on the pieces. So what they did was take strips of fabric, laid it across a piece of fabric in this case because there is a foundation under these sewed them down and then cut these pieces or these diamond shapes out of the scrap pieced piece of fabric if that makes sense this whole thing is done that way and what's really incredible about this is it's done completely by hand even the stitch and flip method is done by hand onto a foundation Amazing, amazing. And the way I know it is a foundation piece is because I peeked inside one of these stars to see exactly what was going on. And with this being such a magnificent quilt, this maker wasn't perfect with those points. And that's okay. You can't tell, especially when you have all this going on in this quilt and this quilt block. So let's take these away and peek at the actual fabrics. For the most part, these are cotton fabrics, or at least they appear to be cotton. I think there are a lot of feed sacks in here. There are a lot of scraps. The only exception is this fabric here, which is almost like a terry cloth. It reminds me of a dish rag or something like that, like an old dish rag, which is interesting that it's in here. And it is throughout this quilt. Another wonderful aspect of it is this wonderful pink fabric that's scattered about. It gives this beautiful anchor for this quilt. But as we look at this quilt, we can also see that the muslin that's used, there is some discolorations. You can see that here, especially in the seams where this comes together. That's expected, especially because of the age. It was completed in 1962. How do I know that? I know that because on the far corner is the date embroidered right there. So this is something that has been dated, which I love, love, love. It takes all the guesswork and speculation out of it. There are also initials WWW on the other corner and another surprise we will talk about when we start looking at this amazing quilting that's on this quilt. So continuing on with the fabrics, we see oranges and yellows and pinks and blues and reds and all different kinds. And these star points are made up of between four and six different fabrics. All right, let's move on to this quilting. Like I said, everything's hand done. It's hand pieced, it's hand quilted. Even the binding was put on by hand. So the quilting, there is a wonderful large space between the stars that allows for beautiful, beautiful quilting motifs. And we see that here and here and even some half motifs here. Hopefully you can really see how dense and beautiful this quilting is. And the stitches are perfectly even, so pretty. And I look through all of the quilting motifs and they're pretty consistent with the exception of this little guy right here. There is 
a little tiny butterfly or bumblebee or something. It's almost like an Easter egg, a nice little surprise that's in here. Another thing really cool about this quilting is you can see the pencil lines. Now I know that the maker probably wasn't thrilled about that when that happened or possibly not thrilled about it. Maybe it was just part of life. They didn't come off. I love that aspect because it really tells me how it was made and how it was quilted, but I can see why it might be upsetting to some. That said, I'm so glad they're there because it just adds to the charm, in my opinion, of this quilt. Okay, so let's turn it over and take a look at the back. Now you can really see the quilting. It's amazing and the motif really shows up. But what I think is really unique about this quilt is this backing is all one piece of fabric. It's not pieced together, which tells me it was probably a sheet because this is a huge piece of fabric to not have any seams in it. Okay, let's move on to the binding. So the binding is this wonderful blue. Now it may have been added or replaced at a different time, maybe a later date, I'm not sure because it's in excellent condition. What's also unique though about this binding is it is put on separately, but it was hand stitched to the front, then turned to the back with these itty bitty meticulous little stitches hand stitched down. The workmanship on this is impeccable. It's just beautiful. And I love that whoever put this on picked this cobalt blue because it ties this quilt together and gives it a nice frame. Let's turn it back around because I want to point something else out. So the maker used an off-white or maybe white at the time, uh, background fabric for this and also did the same background in the border. So it makes it look like these stars are floating on top of one piece of fabric when it is not. These borders were put on after these blocks were pieced together. You can see the seams, you can even see a shift in the quilting, but that overall look of it being floating on top is really cool. This is a wonderful idea we can take as modern day quilters into our own quilting journey especially if you want to highlight quilting like this maker did. One last thing I want to talk about is a little sad, but part of the history of this quilt is that on the corner, if you flip it over, you can see somebody wrote with a, what I think is a permanent pen, 10B. I was talking to a friend of mine, you may know her, Tracy from the Sewing Channel. I was telling her about this quilt and I sent her a picture of this. I couldn't figure out what it meant I thought it might even had something to do with the auction, but she said it's probably because this went to a nursing home and I didn't even think about that. And it's just another part of this quilt story. Now let's talk about the lessons we can learn from this amazing quilt. The first lesson that I think we can take from it is that cobalt blue binding. It just frames this whole quilt. And I think as a maker, I would probably have picked pink because I love the pink throughout this, but adding that blue, oh, I just, I love it, I love it. Because the binding is in such good condition, however, I do think it was replaced, but I'd love to think that maybe the first maker did have blue binding and maybe if it were replaced, that they replaced it with a blue, whoever did that. So either way, it was a great design choice. It adds to this quilt and just makes a beautiful frame for it, especially when you consider the borders, which is the next lesson I think we can learn from this. The borders are the same fabric as the background fabric on the blocks, and it really gives a wonderful effect because it creates this awesome look where it almost looks like these stars are either applique or just floating along in this background fabric. It's a wonderful illusion that we could add to our own quilts and make really cool blocks pop like these. And lastly, I have to talk about that little bee or butterfly or whatever bug it is that is hidden in the quilting of this. This is something that I would love to do in future quilts and I hope you'll consider it too. Whether you're quilting them yourself, hand quilting or machine quilting or sending them out, put a little motif in. If you're having them long armed, ask the long armor to do it because it's just a fun little element that is a hidden part of this quilt, but adds a little extra touch that is, I don't know, like finding an Easter egg, you know? It's a cool aspect and I love that about this quilt. And there's so many other things we could talk about. We could talk about the scrappiness using that, what I believe was maybe a washcloth or something in the quilt, along with all those cottons, the pinks, the blues, there's just so many. Tell me what your favorite part of this quilt is in the comments below. As promised, I'm gonna show you a little little sneak peek of a quilt that I got from Fallon from So Be A Quilt. This is her quilt. I'm going to be giving it back. I think I will be mailing it back, Fallon. Uh, and here it is. You can see it. It's in this box. Look at this quilt. This is an antique quilt that I will be doing a video on in the near future. We have some fun stuff around this quilt, both Fallon and I. So stay tuned for that. It'll be a lot of fun 
to see us work together on a project that includes this quilt in some way. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you take some time to sew and I will see you real soon.